So hi guys, this is Dr. Pavan and today we are going to talk about the steps of the nephrectomy. So let's start by talking about it. Okay, right. So the first thing what you need to understand is what are the indications of a nephrectomy? Like why would you want to remove somebody's kidney? Right? I mean, what can be the indications of nephrectomy? So the non-functioning kidney. Okay, so let's assume that somebody has a non-functioning. We just discussed it, right? I mean, we talked about the laparoscopic nephrectomy. So indications are more or less the same. So non-functioning kidney. Somebody's kidney has not functioning at all. If at all there is a malignant tumor. If at all there is a malignancy in one particular kidney, obviously you have to remove that kidney. Let's say if at all there is a trauma which has led to the grade four or grade five injury and the patient is hemolytically unstable, you definitely have to remove that particular kidney. And then let's say if at all there is a donor kidney, like if at all there is some kidney donor, let's say somebody wants to donate the kidney to their relatives, friends or something. So yeah, you can perform something which is called as a donor nephrectomy. So these are the broad indications of performing a nephrectomy, right? Now, let us talk about So today we'll be focusing our discussion mainly on the open nephrectomy okay so today we will be focusing our discussion on the open nephrectomy right now in the open nephrectomy what you need to understand is that the anesthesia obviously it's always a general anesthesia so you'll have to put an endotracheal tube and yeah that is how it is basically done now what about the position let's assume that you have to operate on my right kidney okay what do you want you want the right side up right right yeah right so what will it be will it be a left lateral decubitus or the right lateral decubitus so please try to understand it is going to be a left lateral decubitus position so in the left lateral decubitus position the right side is up and yeah that's what position which you basically give for the right nephrectomy so it's simple nothing major about this but you need to understand this in the left lateral decubitus position left side is down right side is up okay understood right then that is the basic principles of giving any particular position that the pressure points have to be kind of cushioned okay so what you need to understand is that there isn't you have to put an axillary low rule has to be kind of placed under the kind of uh, lower dependent arms so you basically place uh, what you call as a pillow between the knees like uh, the two legs are there between that you have to place a kind of pillow then the arms have to kind of go on the armrest that is what you have to do and you know if at all there is a kidney break you can apply the kidney break that's all fine and the soft tissue for example let's say there is a female so you have to give adequate padding to the breasts and then uh, yeah that's what you have to do now, once you're keeping the patients in this lateral decubitus position, the patient can, you know, fall like this and that. So you have to fix this particular patient and for that, what you have is the belts, okay? So it's maintained by applying the adhesive tape and the straps. So usually you have a straps, you kind of apply the straps, usually you apply two straps and that is how you kind of fix this particular patient, okay? I hope you have understood. Kidney is elevated, if at all there is a kidney bridge or if you want, you can kind of put some kind of uh, roll okay roll bandage something below the kind of that kidney part so that the kidney is a bit elevated so that it's easier for you to kind of dissect that particular area okay so this is how the position is given as you can see uh, this is where we are going to operate there is a kidney break which has been given which has opened this particular flank as i told you the hands are going to go like this in order to go properly cushioning these are the tapes which they have applied but you can apply the belts as well that's fine so here they have used the adhesive tapes in order to kind of fix this particular patient you understanding this is how you place a position and the right side of the patient is up so what is this this is what is the left lateral take this position they are going to perform a right nephrectomy in this particular patient okay so that is what they have done okay now coming to the incision for kind of the uh flank approach okay so in a in an incision for the posterior lateral approach that is what is a flank approach okay so a standard loin incision is basically made now there is a 11th rib and the 12th rib okay so you usually kind of give an incision just parallel to the 12th rib or if you want to go ahead with a rib cutting incision then you have to kind of place an incision above the 12th rib okay so it starts uh, kind of below the posterior renal angle angle between the 12th rib and the lateral border of the sacrospinalis muscle and extends anteriorly to the lower border of the rectus abdominis now what is this how will you come to know the lower border of the rectus abdominis it is basically four to five centimeters above the anterior superior iliac spine okay so you kind of go and uh, yeah like you kind of go in that particular parallel manner to the 12th rib 
if you want to perform the rib sparing procedure if you want to go ahead with the rib cutting kind of procedure then you can also give an incision above that particular 12th rib many surgeons prefer the 12th rib approach by making an incision over the 12th rib and dissecting the anterior part of the 12th rib this offers a better access that's good okay now these are the different incisions which we have now here there is a slight mistake it's not a rib retracting it is a rib cutting flank incision okay so in the rib cutting flank incision what are you basically going to do is you're basically going to cut the 12th rib okay so incision is parallel to the 11th or the 12th rib with or without kind of rib uh, kind of a section so usually if at all you're giving it on the 12th rib or you're giving between the 11th and the 12th rib obviously you're going to kind of cut the 12th rib Okay, that's fine now if at all you do this then there's a good exposure to the upper pole of the renal and, and the renal hilum. so why would you want to perform a rib cutting incision okay let's say your pathology is basically on the upper pole near the upper pole so you have a tumor which is an upper pole tumor so you have to kind of dissect it properly for that you have to kind of reach to the upper pole in a proper manner for that you have to kind of give a rib cutting incision i hope you've understood okay now avoid uh, avoid uh, kind of uh, entering into the peritoneal kind of cavity and commonly used for the open nephrectomy so this is something which is commonly used like the rib cutting incision is something which is commonly used the problem with this is that post operative pain due to the intercostal nerve injury so you are at the end of the day cutting the 12th rib so obviously you're going to injure an intercostal nerve so yeah there's pain risk of pleural injury so you are away from the peritoneum that's great but you are very very close to the pleura so you may kind of rupture the pleura in this particular incision limited access to the lower pole or the large uh, kind of muscles now if at all let's say there is a lower pole tumor and you have given a rib cutting incision you're going to have a hard time because you will find it very difficult to kind of do the inferior kidney dissection and rib dissection may cause the chronic pain so because of that particular bone which you have cut maybe the patients might have a chronic pain so this is about the rib cutting incision okay now there is rib sparing flank incision as well as i told you that if you have given incision just parallel to the 12th rib just below the 12th rib rather so similar location but avoids the kind of rib dissection and kind of by retracting the rib that's fine it again gives the decent kind of an exposure obviously lesser than the rib cutting incision but yeah it reduces the kind of post-operative pain and avoids the rib related complications exposure may be limited difficult to kind of in muscular and obese patients now this is again very very important if you're operating on somebody who is old the muscles will not be that strong so you can always use a retractor in order to take those particular muscles away that you have done more the rectus abdominis all those particular stuff but let's say if it all there is a very obese patient or somebody who is very very muscular you will find it a bit difficult to kind of mobilize the kidney right in that you have to kind of consider a rib cutting incision now there is subcostal or the cocker's incision this is an oblique incision below the costal margin typically for the right nephrectomy or an adrenal adrenalectomy so like transverse incision you basically give below the costal margin preferred for the right side okay less painful transverse incision is less painful it gives a good exposure to the upper abdomen and the adrenal gland and it preserves the rib so these are the advantages of the subcostal or the coaches incision do you see it very often no not really but all you need to understand is that the subcostal incision is less painful okay they are less painful chevron incision if at all you give a bilateral subcostal incision that is what is a chevron incision so it is a bilateral subcostal incision joined in the midline excellent exposure for both the kidneys and kind of great vessels useful for bilateral renal procedures or the transplant recipient nephrectomy so uh, nowadays we usually don't use this for the transplant recipients but that's fine but what is a chevron bilateral subcostal incision is a chevron sensation it's more invasive that's fine significant post operative pain will be there and higher risk of wound complications no doubt about it okay so all these particular things will be more in the chevron incision bilateral subcostal understood now coming to the next one the next one is thoracic abdominal incision i have never seen it in the real life so what you basically do over here is that you extend okay because uh, at my center we usually kind of use the uh, robotics in order to kind of if at all let's say there is a infra like supra cardiac kind of a tumor thrombus we use the kind of robotics that's fine now what you need to understand is here you give an incision the flank incision and you extend it into the thorax you cut the kind of diaphragm that is what is a thoraco abdominal incision it extension uh, of the flank incision into the thorax with the diaphragm division so that is what is a thoraco abdominal obviously it is super invasive and it's going to have a lot of comorbidities okay so excellent exposure for the upper pore renal hilum all those things are great but 
at what cost? Useful for the large upper pole tumors or involvement of the diaphragm. Entry into the pleural cavity, cavity requires a chest tube. So after this, definitely you have to go to put the patients on the chest tube. Risk of respiratory complications obviously will be there and uh, longer kind of.